for the time being until I figure out another mounting solution that's how that's going I've extended the wires because they're only about a foot long that's shit you'd think they'd give you some longer bloody wires with it uh, they come down to here so we've got a GPS connection and all the wires for the dash there uh, what are these for? <laughs> these are the headlight wires which I was testing that last night um, and all the, the um, all the ones for the switches and everything else oh this is a nightmare and that's the main power wires, that's going to go directly into that that's got to come off the battery so this is the 108 volts to 12 volt regulator, 20 amp regulator that I've got uh, I think the red one goes to the main power off the battery up to 108 volts and then the negative is the same goes onto the battery and then output is that's for 12 volts that one there, those two there so I'll get 12 volts output which is going to power the Arduino directly and I've got to figure out where all these bloody wires go then well now what I'm going to do is a test I'm not going to, I'm not going to wire the regulator up um, I'm just going to power it directly from these two wires because this, these two wires, believe it or not, are controlling all the lights and the switches and absolutely everything. I mean, if that Arduino goes down, I've lost everything. I have it a major, major problem at the minute. If I wanted to use that, which is all wired up, well, it's not wired up, <laughs> it's fitted, I can't use my current. Arduino setup. There's my left indicator that's working. As you can see. Now, now, on the wiring here, if I get this, it tells you about the um, left turn signal is orange and it's 12 volts switched. Now, unfortunately, with an N channel MOSFET, it actually switches negative it doesn't switch positive so this wire here if I connect it directly to the positive on there it will come on because that is constantly live it switches that to complete the circuit I can't connect it to that because that's zero volts so I have got a major problem if I wanted to use that speedo it doesn't look like I can actually use it the only other option I've got is to get some p-channel MOSFETs and use transistors to switch everything which is so bloody messy it's unreal so I think my only option now is to fit external LEDs and make my own cluster so anybody who wants one of these they look pretty but you can't use them because if you're using, like I say, if you're using N-channel MOSFETs, you can't switch positive, it switches negative, so you can't have the telltales working. I mean, everything else should work because it's completely standalone, but the telltales, as in the main beam, the indicators, or anything, won't work. Five hours later, five hours it's taken me. I've had to take this thing apart, completely strip it. I'm not showing the back because I've had to take all the back off it's all glued together so I've completely destroyed the back and I've got a 3D printer casing for it but it's back on now indicator <laughs> it's working finally so I've got one for the left I've got one for the right and then I've got one for the main beam the hazards, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with yet, but the indicator, the telltale's working perfectly. Okay, we have indicators. Cancel, left. Cancel. Uh, I've had to take this switch off to figure out the bloody wiring. That's off. The side lights, 
Actually, that's wrong. That's headlight. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's supposed to be headlight. Oh. Oh well, back to the drawing board. Uh, these are the two switches which I've got in pieces which I'll explain in a sec. The one on the right controls the... I'm talking about the headlights now, or the headlight. So the one on the right controls the um, side light and headlight switch on and off. This one controls the main beam, or dip. So, the idea of it was the Arduino would control all of it basically and all that would be is just a very low, uh, low 5 volt switch but the headlight itself runs on the same as the telltale lights on here they run on a 12 volt switched positive the Arduino because of the end channel MOSFETs runs on a 12 volt switch negative <laughs> don't laugh <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I can't I can't explain to you how the way that N channel MOSFETs work. Um, all I can say is it's switch negative, which means that you've got to have power. If I have two these two indicators here. So I've got to have constant positive power. So if I take those two and I apply Go on. If I take those two and I apply 12 volts to that, what it does then is it switches the negative. Now that's fine when you do things like that, but when you've got something like this, what it does is it switches the negative. So if I connect both of those to 12 volts, which I can't do, and it switches the negative and everything comes on at once. This is the problem I've got. So what I've got to do now is I've got to try and take this apart and I've got to see if I can separate the circuits rather than having one negative and then positive and positive I've got to have a negative and a positive for each one and then it'll be fine otherwise I can't use this or, or I'm going to have to use relays and switches and oh, it just gets so bloody messy as you know, I am a past master at completely f***ing up. Well, I can I completely f*** up. It can't be done with N-channel MOSFETs. It just doesn't work, and I wish I'd have sat down beforehand and thought about it. It's okay for doing things like my indicators, which are on, uh, with the dip, which is that one. If I apply 12 volts to that, the dip light comes on. If I apply 12 volts to the side light, the side light comes on. And then that one's at the headlight, and that one comes on. But the only trouble is, as I've tried to explain, it doesn't switch positive, it switches negative. I can't use that, so what I've had to do is, um, I've got some opto-isolator relay thing Arduino things come in. This is really starting to do me head in. I've got everything in pieces. I can't. It doesn't work. It just does not work. Um, it's a monstrosity of wiring. It, I didn't like that in the first place. Um, it's held on with double sided tape, obviously, because that's the only way I can actually mount it. Now, the trouble with this as I've explained a few times now number one Tony built it and uh, number two because it's switch negative I can't use it for most of the things like that it won't work the indicators do work because there's a positive and a negative the headlight won't work because it's switched positive rather than negative the bright light, that's that one. Yeah, I've already covered that, oh, bollocks, I don't care. Uh, yeah, it won't work. So I've got some things coming which hopefully will be here today and I'm going to be using an Arduino to, to power it, control it. They're basically switch relays, so that's all I can do. This is how I'm having it. Now for somebody who already mentioned about the brake cable brake cable the hydraulic hose which runs underneath and goes underneath the sabaton which you can't see but it comes out here i can't run it on the inside purely because the battery comes to here 
there, Tony. I'll point at the one I'm f***ing <laughs> hell. The battery comes to here. So there is nowhere, and it actually sits obviously up against the frame, so there's nowhere for the cable to go. It's got to go under there, unfortunately. I've moved this here to give me some, this is actually, IP, I think it's IP56, but I've put silicon inside and sealed all the outlets and absolutely everywhere, so water ain't gonna get in that. And the reason being, the wires come out here, could have made them a bit bloody longer, Tony. Uh, the reason being is I want as much space here as possible for all the wiring and everything else and it just makes sense to put that out of the way there anyway. It's not used that bit, is it? No. Is it? <laughs> I could have put it there. And then fed the water. No, the wire would still have to come all the way down there. No, it's best off there. Is it? I'm waiting for this Arduino relay opto isolator switch thing coming in, it's an 8 channel which should fit hopefully perfectly in there if you can hear me over the noise of this thing it's that making the noise if you hadn't noticed it's basically an 8 relay, it's one of these it's an 8 relay isocoupled um, isocoupled optocoupled um, relay bank and it'll allow, it'll allow me to switch positive rather than switch negative, which the N-channel MOSFETs were doing. So I should be able to link absolutely everything. And they're 10 amp relays, so you can have it. <laughs> I paid five quid for these from Amazon, delivered same day. I ain't joking. Two hours from when I ordered them to when they delivered them. Delivered them. Two f hours. So I've got that thing. That is going to be my new version. Now the idea of this is this is going to be bolted on, well, stuck onto the front of the sabaton. So as the terminals are all pointing upwards. And then the cables are going to come in from this way, and I'll be able to screw them straight into the terminals. Fingers crossed. I hope this time it works. I'm bloody, I'm pissed off with the wiring. Now, it's 3am, I wanted to get this thing working. I had a bit of a problem because I thought it was 5 volts. It needs 5 volts, it actually needs 12 volts direct. So on there I've got an L7805 regulator, I think it is. Which isn't even getting warm. That's powering the TNC, which is actually going through blah, like that. I'm going to bed before I pass out. I've been up 24 hours just to make this bloody thing work, or not just to make this work, to do all the shit. I'm talking bollocks, I'm going to bed.